Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to make a Saiyan Scouter from Dragon Ball Z. The Saiyan Scouters are not consistent with their design or look, so I'm going to try and make one that I can just hang on my ear. I know I'm going to make this thing out of foam, so I based the size off of a pair of ear protectors and just cut out a couple of strips to fold into the basic shape. I'll start with three and a half inches for the long side, and then I'll add two inch legs that will have half of an inch rise. These strips are an inch and a half thick, and I heat up the foam with a heat gun so I can fold in the sides and start to make a box. I use some one, two, three blocks to cut the legs square so that they will glue together correctly and be about two inches wide when finished. Three and a half inches long seems too big, so I cut another set that is only three inches and heat up and fold those legs and trim the sides and glue them together. The bending and angles of the foam makes the edges bulge and not square, so I sand everything down flat on the top and the bottom. To help it hang on my ear, I'm going to copy the shape from a Bluetooth cell phone headset and then bend a piece of coat hanger to that shape. The sides of the foam box is not thick enough to support the ear hanger, so I glue in a couple of scraps of foam to thicken it up. Now I know that I want the flat sides to look as thin as it can be, so I'm going to add a piece of 2mm craft foam, cut it to size, and then I'll glue a second piece of 5mm foam to the inside in order to make it a little thicker and a little stronger. I cut a hole in the 2mm foam, now this is where the grill is going to go for the earpiece, and then I'll cut out the 5mm foam after it's glued in place. To make the grill that goes inside the ear cover, I'm going to cut up a couple of large combs. Now what I want is the bigger tooth part, and my plan is to cut every other tooth of the comb shorter, and then I can nest the two combs together and get a unique grill piece for my ear cover. And I'll glue them together with super glue, and I'm going to use an accelerant so the glue will set faster. I'm going to spray paint this gold, but the pattern is different enough that it won't look like Geordi LaForge's visor from Star Trek The Next Generation. I cut a small piece of foam to start the arm that holds the eyepiece. I plan to light it up using an LED flashlight that clips onto the bill of a ball cap, but I want just the LEDs in the arm, so I disassemble the flashlight and remove the circuit board. Now I'm going to need a battery pack, so why not keep this one? I trim it smaller so it'll fit inside the earpiece and add some wires for the battery leads so I can connect it back to the LED circuit board, and then I can just put it all back together. The LED circuit board is just over an inch and a half wide, so I cut a strip of EVA foam an inch and a half wide to make the arm that holds in the light. I cut angles on one edge to try and get the arm to fit my head, and then cut another piece for the front of the arm. I'll cover the sides later with 5mm craft foam. I want a button to activate the eyepiece light, and I have one of those Try Me buttons that I saved from a Christmas wreath that I got for Smosh. And it's a big red button, which is perfect. So we'll just ignore that it's round and not a square button. Now the red part actually peels off and it's just a small momentary switch inside. So I take it all apart, cut the green plastic housing down and put it back together. And now the button will fit inside of a single layer of foam. The LEDs have a switch on the circuit board. So I remove that and then I solder on the big red button. To start to assemble the eyepiece arm, I need to remove the LEDs from the wires and drill a hole in the earpiece to feed the wires through. I leave enough wires so I can change the batteries out when I need to. A couple of drops of super glue will hold the button in place. I reconnect the LEDs and I can glue the front of the arm onto the ear cover. So I got the majority of the components that I need to make for the main body. What I really need is the scope that comes around the eye. Now, the easiest thing to do is, of course, cut a piece of plastic, but there's a particular type of plastic that I want to use. It just looks like paper right now, but this is cast acrylic, and each has a fluorescent dye in it, making this one a fluorescent green and this one a fluorescent orange. They don't make a blue one with this type of property. What this does is all the light that hits the sides is actually refracted and then comes out the cut edge, primarily making the plastic look like it's glowing. So this is what I want to make my scope out of because once this is actually put up against the LEDs and it's activated, the whole thing will light up and look very cool. Additionally, if we're careful, I can set it down and take a Dremel and I can put displays, the heads up display that goes over the eyepiece. So when you look into it, you would actually have the marks in front of your eye as if you're getting your power reading. So that's something else I wanna try. To make it easier to cut my eyepiece, I'm actually gonna take one of the Bandai toys 
take the eyepiece out and make a pattern off of that. I just trace the eyepiece onto the poster board and when I draw it, I draw the whole thing out flat because I'll be able to bend the plastic to shape after it's cut out. And I make sure the part that fits inside the arm will be big enough. I trace the pattern twice onto each color of plastic and then cut out all four eyepieces on the bandsaw. It's tricky getting the tight radiuses on the corners, so after they're all cut out, I sand the edges on the disc sander. After all the cutting and sanding is done, I peel the paper off one set of the eyepieces and they already start to glow in the room light. I set the plastic between some blocks of wood and heat just the part that I want to bend. Now you can't see it on the camera, but I can see when the surface of the plastic starts to change and then I can bend it. And if you heat it too long, the plastic will bubble and burn, which would suck. I want to make sure that the plastic meets right up with the LEDs inside. So I cut some small pieces of self-adhesive foam and stick them inside to make the space smaller and hold the plastic in just by friction. Now, if I had planned ahead, I could have glued all this foam in and not needed to use the adhesive type. I cut a couple pieces of 5mm foam to finish the arm and glue them on while holding the plastic eyepiece in place so they know everything will fit. After the contact cement sets, I trim the craft foam down and then cut the front square. Then I cut off a little bit from the very front of the arm and then sand it so it's kind of rounded off. And I use a fine grit sanding block to clean up some of the fuzziness that the orbital sander leaves behind. Mm. That works. I like that. All right. The last piece to add is the cushion that goes around the earpiece. Now what I want to use is some 3 8 inch foam weather stripping for the cushion. I cut a length that fits around the earpiece and I plan to glue the seam behind the arm so you won't see it. Before I paint, I'm going to tape over the red button and seal the inside of the earpiece and cover the edges where I need to glue on the cushion later. I also put a scrap of plastic inside the arm so the LEDs are safe. I put some tape sticky side up on a board and then stick the cushion onto that. And I make it close to the shape that I want. This will make it easier to paint and the spray paint will not blow it away. While the paint is drying, I draw symbols on the paper over the inside of the eyepiece. Then I can use my Dremel with a number 125 high speed cutter bit and I just trace back over to the designs that I drew in pencil, engraving the plastic as I go. I place my extra plastic on the sides of the eyepiece. This helps with holding the Dremel flat to the plastic I'm working on because it's too small to easily engrave otherwise. Of course, I could have made my engraving marks before I cut them out on the bandsaw. So I scrape out the plastic sawdust from the engraving lines and peel off the protective paper. And then I can heat and bend these guys too. I spray painted the grill gold. In the earpiece is white Plasti Dip, and the cushion is black Plasti Dip. Before I peel the tape off of the earpiece, I mix some craft paint and paint a gray stripe down the front of the arm. I cut the Plasti Dip from the edges of the tape, so I don't peel it off the foam when I remove the tape. I super glue the grill in place, add some contact cement for the ear cushion, and I carefully place the ear cushion around the edges of the earpiece, and I glue where there is no paint. Nope. <laughs> now, not surprisingly, the balance of the scatter is off and it won't stay over my eye. Now, I really don't want to make a headband for this thing, so I add fishing weights to the back of the corner to balance it out. And then I make two more coat hanger ear pieces so I can get one that actually hangs right on my ear. Now, it took some tinkering, but to get a fit that's actually on my head without a headband and without any additional strings, I'm really not upset. I mean, this thing's pretty heavy to be hanging just off my ear. And the one big improvement that I think I could do to this is if I had used a switch instead of the momentary button. I thought the momentary button would be good because you could reach up and actually scan for somebody. Hey, look, it works. But a switch, you could turn it on and leave it on. That'd probably be better for pictures. Additionally, maybe a little spirit gum to help hold it in place while walking around would make this a little bit better because I can feel it wobble pretty good just talking to you. I'd like to say thank you to TacLife who sent me an SDH-13DC cordless screwdriver. 
This little guy is actually really very cool. In fact, Tack Life was cool enough to send me two of them. So I've got another one right here, brand new in the box, and I'm gonna be giving it away to one of you. For the first 12 hours that this video is posted, the top comment's gonna be from me, and I want everyone to respond to it who actually wants a chance to win this. And I'll pick somebody at random and ship it out to you personally. And thank you to Tech Life. I appreciate the opportunity to check out your new tool. Now I know there are lots of different ways that someone could make a scouter, but this is how Odin makes. I now have a Patreon page, which will give you the chance to win props that are made right here in Odin Makes. And it's the only place where I'll talk about my upcoming builds. If you like the video or have ideas or something for me to make, please leave them in the comments below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture. It's over 9,000! Ow.